What's going on, champs and champets? It's Fire Monkey here, and in today's YouTube video, I'm giving you a little bit of an update on Suicide Squad to kill the Justice League because this is a game that I actually bought the $100 version of, or well, I sold like a Counter Strike 2 knife or whatever else to afford this, and I wanted to give my own opinions on this game. Now, I know you know you've probably heard a million different reviews from IGN or whatever else talking about this game and different things here and there, and they have said some pretty negative stuff about it. However, I am someone who didn't really, you know, ever have a hate train on this game. It it was always a situation where I was like, you know, I'm interested in the game, I want to see it succeed and do well, it looks fun, you know, I enjoyed the alpha tests and everything else, but at the exact same time, I'm scared of the live service component. And when I first tried recording this YouTube video, I will go ahead and mention that complaint right away, I already got hit by a little bit of that live service component, because as a completely single player player, I've played this game for like 30 plus hours without having a single issue, right? I've played completely solo without any friends or anything else, limited use of the online mechanics or whatever else that the game actually offers you and I've played for a very long time without having to worry about too much however earlier today when I went to actually start recording today's YouTube video it kept mentioning that I was unable to even launch the game because it couldn't detect me actually getting connected properly to the Warner Brothers servers and that is one thing that's scary to me as someone who's enjoying this game from the experience of it not really being as live service and being something I can play offline if you don't have internet one day or you have a situation where their servers are under maintenance or something like that you just can't play the game and that is one of the main complaints I've really got to mention I enjoy a lot of stuff I mean if you guys even pay attention to what's going on here I've gone through the main storyline I've gone ahead done this you know in-game content up to level 16 here with the finite crisis thing I've gone ahead and made it so my loadout has tons of infamy set stuff nemesis or notorious villain set stuff all that type of stuff and it's been something that I have genuinely been playing quite a lot now I've been mainly playing Harley Quinn you look at my other characters they're nowhere near as maxed out as Harley Quinn, but I have been actually enjoying this game quite a lot. But that whole entire online service thing is the main yikes factor for me, especially with seeing how the game's performing on Steam right now. I'm not one to be like, oh, the game's performing badly, it's a dead game or whatever else, but I do want to mention the obvious concern of this being an always online game that had a pretty terrible launch due to the public reception it had before the game even released, and it's going to make it so the game has a harder redemption arc when it comes to trying to make it so you know every everything works well, they don't have to shut the servers down or anything, and it continues getting new battle passes and cool content for us to actually enjoy. Because as of right now, as someone who's put 30 plus hours into this game, while I do enjoy it, and while I do enjoy the in-game loop, because you know, it's kind of in a way like some sort of roguelike system where you have the same few missions over and over, but you are going to get different loot every single time, I enjoy it, right? You know, I enjoy the little mindless grind and everything else, but I do know that it's not something that is sustainable for a long-term practice, right? It's something that some some people, you know, in that specific niche such as me will enjoy, but a lot of other people won't actually enjoy the same few missions over and over, just because there's a lack of that true variety in the game. And I feel because of that lack of variety, it's going to be a situation where even though I could praise this game, even though I can say, oh, I love the movement, I love going around having these little combats and everything else, it's not going to go too well for the game's future, and it's going to suffer in certain aspects. And I don't want it to suffer, right? You know, it's already had a pretty uh, weird launch where, especially on Steam, it's had a small, small little player count compared to other games, such as like the Avengers game or like Gotham Knights or whatever else, but I really do hope that out of everything, as they continue adding more and more content, if they really want to go down this route of being a live service game, they at least make it so if they ever plan to not add more content to the game, they remove that live service aspect and they allow you to play it completely offline. You know, you can have it so the battle passes are now just little DLCs or whatever you can purchase whenever you want to. You can do something along those lines. There's a lot of different things you really can do to make it work out for you, but I really think that this game would still be fun as long as there was that guarantee that you could play it after the servers inevitably shut down later down the line. And you know, I can understand if maybe that will never happen. Maybe we'll never be able to see the servers actually end up in this way where you're able to play it offline, but I really kind of just feel like this is one of those games that doesn't need to be live service, right? You know, they already mentioned that the battle passes or whatever else aren't timed, you can do them whatever, so at that point you could have just dubbed the battle passes as like miniature DLC uh, tiers or whatever else where you unlock more DLC by playing the game after you purchase it. That way, even if the game wasn't live service, you could still have your quote unquote battle pass system in place for the foreseeable future and not require that online internet connection. And you know, always mentioning stuff regarding being online service and all the type of stuff, they are going to be working on different updates and things here and there. Apparently every single battle pass season is going to have new in-game content for you to do, such as new missions you can loop over and over and over again. But I 
really feel that they need to have more of some sort of storyline going here to keep the game working in the very long term. Because as someone who is, as I mentioned like a million times now, I know it's probably annoying, put multiple hours into this game, you know, over 30 hours, I really enjoy it but I don't have faith in it really lasting too long just because of how different mechanics are being handled. However, since I'm enjoying it, even though I don't have faith in the game, I am going to continue playing it, at least for the time being, because I'm not tired of it, right? And, you know, I can understand people being like, live service, schlop, or whatever else. But in my opinion, you know, when I was younger, I would grow up playing a lot of MMOs and stuff that are no longer around anymore. You know, some of the MMOs I don't even remember the names of, and I had fun with them when it was actually available for me and when I actually played it, so that's how I kind of treat this game right now right I kind of have this mindset that you know all the grind I'm doing right now could one day just be shut off when they shut the servers off or whatever else but I am hopeful that later down the line as this game continues to evolve or whatever else when their plans and everything is done with this game and they don't plan to add anything new they go ahead and make some in-game changes or whatever else to make it so you can continue playing regardless of the game's expiration date that would be one thing that really makes me super duper happy but regardless of the expiration date for this game as it stands right now do I recommend you to pick this up now as I mentioned you're you know maybe I kind of hinted at it or whatever else I didn't fully buy this game with my own money I actually sold a counter-strike 2 knife I had for a while for like hundred and twenty bucks or something to get the deluxe edition in my opinion you know was it a hundred dollars worth no you know this is a game that if you're going to play it I don't think you should spend a hundred dollars for the deluxe edition I mean with that edition you basically get like one season pass for free but you also get some cosmetics that aren't even like the full version of them here so if we go over here to the classic variant you can see that we get this main outfit but all the different color options and you know the different head option are still locked to the store so it's not like you're getting everything right you have to still spend more money on top of that in order to get all the cool little variants of these outfits so I don't think the game's worth $100 I don't think it's worth $70 I would say if you're someone who really really wants to get into this game and you know you have the expendable income or whatever to actually buy it and you think you're going to have fun with it based on the gameplay you're seeing in the background footage and my review definitely go ahead and pick it up right at the end of the day you do what you want with your money and as long as you have fun with whatever you buy I'm not going to complain about whatever you do right however if you're someone who's kind of on the fence about buying this game you're like yeah you know it looks cool based on the gameplay and everything else but you're kind of like me where you're like was it worth spending $70 then I would say wait for like Christmas time or something along those times when the game actually has a discount and is on sale because I do think that $70 for this type of game especially with it being always online is a very steep asking price and you know with comparisons such as the movement and everything else feeling like Sunset Overdrive, in some cases, you might just want to go play Sunset Overdrive, right? That might be your end-all be-all for this video topic and for buying this game is just go play another game that has kind of, you know, a similar feeling movement aesthetic to it and enjoy that until this game goes on a discount or something along those lines where you can enjoy this one without that full, you know, modern day 2024 AAA price or whatever else. And, you know, with all that said, right, with everything out there, I'm not going to say that this is a good game. I'm not going to say it's a bad game but I don't believe that this is the game that should be getting all the hate it's been getting publicly it has its issues sure right it has its things that I don't even agree with myself such as you know trying to log in and being unable to as a mainly solo player however at the exact same time it has a lot of really cool stuff that has kept my attention for a lot longer than a recent games that have actually released and even older games that you know I base my whole entire you know personality online with my other YouTube channel and everything on being Fortnite right this game has kept my attention more than Fortnite recently Recently, and I think in some ways that is a good thing to actually mention. Now, I do gotta admit, until I figure out what else actually gets given to you by the whole entire Season Pass content, I don't think I'm gonna be spending any extra money on this Game Pass, what I've already spent, because, you know, even if we go back to that store category here, you've got some things going on, right? If you click in the Outfits tab, you can go ahead and see that you have some of those more of the original outfit designs or whatever. You have some different color schemes you're able to actually do with those outfits and everything, but at the exact same time, you already have some pretty cool cosmetics you're able to do, right? It's kind of limited right now. You know, if we look over here, we have just three different hairstyles we're able to actually equip here, three different actual body styles and everything else. But just by playing the game normally and, you know, going through all these different options, you do have a lot of ways to really express yourself without spending that extra money in the store. You know, you can go ahead and be like me and do every single one of the Riddler challenges and everything, grind the game out a little bit, get some of those free little cosmetic unlocks, and be happy about yourself. But I don't think that I'm someone who's really 
going to be spending too much money on this game, unless I feel that the Battle Pass, for example, is going to be a good value for my buck, and I mean, you know, this game has the nice thing going for it of Battle Passes not actually being time limited, and that is one reason why I always go back to Halo Infinite, even if I'm not actively playing Halo Infinite, right? Even if I'm not playing it every single day or whatever else, I'll still occasionally purchase a Battle Pass here and there if it has a cosmetic I want, because I know that it's not going to go away one day, and I'm not going to be able to progress it. That's one thing that makes me super excited for the future of this game right here, but as it currently stands, it's in just this odd territory where I both don't recommend the game, but I also recommend the game, right? You know, with the price situation and with it being always online, that's the bad things about this game. However, with the situation of this game just being a fun experience that I enjoy and I put over 30 hours into, I recommend the game in that way. So this is kind of a neutral review, and I know I'm not the best at actually reviewing games, all that type of stuff. Some people might be like, Fire Monkey, you always are just like, these games are too good. Mm, you never say anything bad about them, you know, whatever else you want to say. But I do got to admit that at least from my own perspective, you know, not regarding what I should advise other people to do, I've been having fun. This has been a game that I'm going to continue to play, and, you know, hopefully when I'm, I get, you know, more into that late game content with all my other friends and everything else, I'll maybe go out of my shell and decide to play with other people instead of being purely solo. Because as of right now, even though I have two friends added on the game itself, I've only played it solo, right? I've never actually gone out of my way to play with other people. You know, we'll send little taunts to each other because when you beat their score or whatever on the leaderboard, you can go ahead and taunt them when they open their game. They just see your character flipping them off or whatever else, being like, <laughs> look, I got one point higher than you, and it's a non-endless cycle, right? But other than that, you know, I'm enjoying the game, I'm having fun with it, and I plan to eventually go through all the other characters here, level them up to maximum, and get all their little charms and everything, because for each character you actually play as, you do have bonus little trinkets you can get. As you can see right here, for example, reaching level 30 with Harley Quinn, you get this classic little doll thing. Now, there's a lot of different reskinned variants of it, but that is kind of the same thing with a lot of these other characters. You know, King Shark level 30, you get the King Shark thing, right? But it's going to be the classic design. It won't be this gold one right here. If you play for 15 days in a row, you get this Julian Gregory Day doll, right? You have a little bit of those more interesting benefits where you actually go for and obtain. But as of right now, I've just been having a fun time, right? Regardless of if you buy this game or not, I'm enjoying it in the moment that it's available to me, but I am knowing in the back of my head that it might not be available 24-7, and one day might come where the server shut down and I'm just unable to play Kill the Justice League anymore. But until next time, hope you champs and champions enjoy today's YouTube video, like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't like it, and peace out.